I'm Sean from Offload Rugby Media. I'm Simeon from the TikTok Rare. Guys, I'm Murray, also known as Boss for Rugby HQ. And you're listening to the Rugby Connection Podcast. For the fans, by fans. Hello and welcome to Interview Thursday. This week on the Rugby Connection Podcast, it's our first professional guest, former Edinburgh rugby player, currently at Glasgow Warriors, Scotland International, Murray McCallum. Murray, thanks for coming on the show. How are you getting on? Not bad, thanks. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for coming on. Big, massive thank you to Glasgow Warriors for helping us set that up as well. I was a bit surprised when they actually got back in contact because I can't imagine how many professional clubs get. So, yeah, I was very happy when we got you and obviously you've just joined Glasgow. So, yeah, congratulations on the move. As an Edinburgh fan, I'm a bit upset that you've left, but it's all good. It's, it, ah, it's all right. <laughs> it's a bit, nah, bit different being being in the home side down in the down in the west at the moment, but I'm uh, I'm really enjoying it. Really enjoying the move. I mean, the M8 gets a bit boring because I'm still living through through East, but now nah, we're all right. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I always make a joke that like when players leave Edinburgh or especially go to Glasgow, it all oh, broke my heart. But it, if it's best for your career, I'm I'm all for it. And let's be honest, there's not really any proper rivalries in rugby. Like they'll build it as rivalries, but like. You're still pals with the Edinburgh boys. There's Edinburgh boys pals with the Glasgow boys. They all play together for Scotland majority of the time. Yeah, it's not really rivalry. Yeah, it's, it? a bit, it's a bit different in football in that sense. We yeah. want to try and build the kind of rivalry up, but it's when you're in such close um, close contact with a lot of the boys, it is, it is a bit different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first question from me is, what actually got you into rugby? Well, I was a young age, I was seven when I started uh, chucking a ball about down at McCain Park. I was, um, it was, a, I think it was, it was a parent of a friend of mine in the Beavers, or I think it might have been Cubs, can't remember. You know, the young scouts. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I was, a, I was a big kid, and um, and my mate Gregor was a big kid, and uh, he didn't stick at it. He's not really sporty now, but he was, he was doing it when he was younger. And his dad said, my my, my old man said to, it was to chatting to his dad and um, and Forbes. Is what Paul's dad was like. Well, you should you should take Murray down. You should, you should take him down to McCain because my dad's not a rugby man. He he didn't he grew up with football, but yeah. basically any other sport apart from rugby. He did <laughs> everything at school, but he was like, nah, you know what? Sack it. I'll take him down. Take him down to McCain, and then never really looked back from seven years old. That's that's good. I, I like that. Um, one of the guests, one of the hosts, Simeon asked, "How did you feel when you first got your uh, first cap for Scotland and against Wales in 2018?" Well, I, was, I never really kind of expected things to come that early, but I was lucky enough in the sense of I'd had a reasonable bit of form myself. Mm. Um, Xander had picked up a freak gym injury. Um, Simon was a naughty boy in the 1872 games against Glasgow, and uh, WP now was still nursing himself back to health. So me and uh, me and John Welsh got the got the call, and uh, no, I mean, it was brilliant. Uh, it was, I had a lot of family and friends down watching and it was great yeah. uh, Great that they could um, kind of share that special moment with me. I mean, 80,000 people, closed roof millennium. It was, or Prince Pally, sorry, I better say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, was not, it, was, it was fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely loved it. Obviously, the scoreline dampened it a bit. We got a bit of a hiding, but it was 7-0 when I was on, so... <laughs> Take that as a win. Um, no, there, was a, there was actually two Murrays that I know of in that stadium because I actually was down in Wales for your debut. Oh, nice. Well. So, yeah, so don't need to remind me of the result. So, <laughs> um, Sean, who's the other host of the show, there's the three of us. He's asked, what does a normal training like week when you've built like, on a build up to a game, like what's the regular training progress for you when there's a game at the weekend? On, on the build up to a game, so. That'll be starting for us next week, which I'm quite looking forward to. So on Monday, if we've had a game the week before, on Monday will be more chilled. I mean, this is me speaking from yeah. Edinburgh's perspective, mind, because I've not done that um, at my new club yet. Yeah, of course. I've done that a ago. So uh, in the past, we've had, we've had a pretty chilled day on a Monday. Um, yeah. And then Tuesday, Tuesday would be the bash day. That's when you are kind of kicking seven shades out of each other. Big day, Big day in the gym. Big unit session, lunch, and then a big, um, big training session. Uh, uh, some some good contact, lots of phase stuff. It's normally your defence day uh, because yeah. you're more you're you've recovered from the game before, 
mm-hmm. but it's also the, the furthest away from the game, the next game. So it's, it's trying to find that sweet spot so that boys can actually train, but then also not screw themselves for the for the game that week as well. Aye, that make, yeah, that makes perfect sense. I, I get um, confirm we kind of do that as well. So. Aye. And then day off would be your uh, would be your Wednesday, um, and then if it's a Friday game, you'd go captains run Thursday, uh, play yeah. Friday, yeah. Uh, and if it's not, if it's a Saturday game and you've got the full week's training in, um, you'd have a still a reasonable rugby day that Thursday. You you do more attack based stuff then. Um, no, you normally stay away from the contact, uh, more yeah. power stuff in the gym, maybe a bit shorter as well, and then captains on Friday and game Saturday. Nice. So if it's a, if it's a Saturday game, would it be more like more like scrag when you're attacking, more like just like cuddle and go down sort of thing? Oh, like, a little bit, yeah. Sometimes yeah. it still depends. It depends on the mood, really, of either <laughs> player or coach. Sometimes you'll get some people accepting a touch. Some people will want to put a bit more of a shoulder on as you kind of get to know your teammates and your players. You know who wants what. And they'll know what you want as well. So if, if you like, I've, I don't mind it either way. But some guys like to run particularly hard, um, and then they'll probably be uh, ex- they, they'll expect and accept if you get hit a bit harder as well, because you don't want boys kind of teaming through uh, the defensive line when it's not full contact. Yeah, that's that makes sense. That's fair enough. I'm um, sticking with Sean's question. Um, who's your favourite team to play against? Uh, I, th- I think I've. Decided on that one. I've speaking about that sometimes with the boys. Who do you like? What away games or what teams you like playing against? I really like playing against Ulster. All right, Ulster are a brilliant team to play against. Uh, the, the away fans at the Kings Pan are always brilliant. Like Ravenshill gets uh, gets a good bit of noise. Uh, they're always really good boys. They're always good, it's always a good physical encounter. Um, yeah. Now Ulster games normally get a bit a bit feisty and they're, and, they're, and they're decent. So I'd probably say them. Yeah, that's good. That's I like that. I've always been up for out of all the games when Edinburgh, like when you played for Edinburgh. Obviously, can't comment when you played for Glasgow because you've you've not played for Glasgow as of yet. Um, when you it's like Edinburgh Ulster, it's always like you've said, it's always a fiery game. Both teams are always up for it, as as expected, because you don't really want a team that's nah, we're we're just gonna write them off, and because that's that never works in professional sport. Don't you know? Yeah. Um. Simeon has asked, what is your best rugby memory? Oof. Get it, well, get my first cap against uh, against Wales has got to yep. be one. Yeah. Um we there's been a few school games that have really that always stick out in my memory. Um going on tour to Canada and I came on at the same time as Lewis Carmichael got his first cap. So, oh, yeah. uh, so that was that was really Jamie Jamie Ritchie got his first cap that day as well. Um, I think there's a few boys. Hey, still maybe George Horn before or after. Can't remember, but yeah, there was that tour was really good because there was a lot of young boys around my age that all kind of came through the same age group and systems. So that uh, that 2018 tour was was fantastic. Yeah, that yeah, I was going to say because you. You, Blair Kinghorn, Jamie Ritchie, like you've mentioned, all kind of came through together, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jamie, Jamie, and I played for uh, play, played for uh, Strath Allen, um, and uh, before that, like under 15s, Fife and Tayside, stuff like that. We we, we yeah. played together until yeah. about 15. Stick it because you've mentioned Fife, because I know you you've played at Dunfermline. Um, do you think it's harder for like Fife based players to get through the system compared to like? Boys from the borders or the highlands, because obviously, like the borders have like hike and like rugby royalty almost. Is it? Do you think yeah. it's harder for the five boys to get? No, I know what you the... mean. Um, it, if I'm honest, I always kind of it's, it's about making quite a good impression at a young age, because particularly if you're from somewhere like Fife, because that's when you get picked up into the Fife and Tay side, and then that's when you make it to the Cali, and it's really. I mean, this is it. Might have changed now, but then this certainly when I came through a few years ago, it was getting to that Cali because then that's when the national selectors come watching, and then that's yeah. when anyone from kind of Edinburgh or Glasgow start started really looking at you. I mean, the regional academies and then and the new development officers and the in the kind of the growth of the game and the coaching now, um, it's it's certainly looking a lot uh, a lot better, and the boys are getting picked up. But I'd say the same opportunities are everywhere, um, but just 
it's the luck of the draw sometimes, if I'm honest. Yeah, that's fair. I've always said, because you get people given a lot of, like, the people that get, like, residency rule, getting a lot of stick. And I'm like, but if that Scottish player is good enough, they'll make it in. Like, that's that they're not taking anyone's spot away. I'm guessing you feel the exact same way. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Like, if people come over and and and, and they and they want to play for the country, or if they come over and they have a, a grandparent, uh, they, they're just, they, they could be just as Scottish as you and I, but they might not have the accent. Like, yeah. You can't you can't begrudge people um, for that if I'm honest because at, at the end of the day, is kind of patriotic as as as, as Scots are and believe me I'm one of them. You, <laughs> rugby's a job at yes. the end of the day and if and if they if they're gonna get better exposure or play more rugby or get paid more money, like, it's what happens and it's yeah. it's not nice to hear it's not nice to be a kind of youngster and 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 kind of see that happen at times but. It's, you almost need to use it as like a drive. It's like, right, you know what? I'm going to train hard, and I'm going to get noticed, and I'm going to be the best because that's kind of where you want to be. Really, you want to be the best. Yeah, of course. Or you could always do what uh, Sean Lamont famously did and dye his hair blonde, and that's he. He still admits that he he dyed his hair blonde, and then everyone's like, that that boy with the blonde hair is doing really well. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, can I always... think you can always stick out in other ways. Yeah, of course. Yeah, but if in doubt, just dye the hair and. <laughs> people know this shit. Yeah. But like I've always used the example of like if that certain player that wasn't grew up in Scotland scores the winning try for Scotland for like the Six Nations or a World Cup, nobody's gonna complain where they're from. They're the hero. Like so it doesn't matter. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So I just I don't know. I think people are just a bit pernickety on stuff like that. And it's more the old people, fashioned people always have their opinions though and and oh, yeah. sometimes you can't change that. Uh, so, but again, it's just, for for the kids kind of coming through, it's it's just about working working hard and, and, and doing the best you can do. Because again, that's that's all you can. And if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, hopefully you still like rugby and you still play. Like, yeah, professional, professional sports not for everyone. Yeah, that's that's well said. I like how you said. I like how you said it's not for everyone. That's fair enough. Um, so you've got like a very good connection with Fife Rugby. So you have played for Dunfermline, growing coming through the ranks, but you also uh, coached at Crocodie. So what got you actually into the coaching aspect of rugby? Uh, I've I've always uh, from a young age I've quite liked um, kind of coaching, particularly uh, I kind of got into coaching kids. Um, I've helped out a few school things and. Uh, I've had a, a friend of a friend who ran like a rugby tours thing, so I've, I've taken a few sessions uh, for American coaching, uh, American rugby schools coming over, Canadian schools, um, and I and I kind of I kind of really enjoyed those few sessions that I took. So I, I looked into it, and they run uh, the kind of the level uh, ones and twos and threes as well, and if you want to level four, but that's kind of more serious kind of degree. You do that probably when you have more time. Mm-hmm. Um, courses at the SRU for the players. And I got involved and did the level two. And Corgi, Corgi George, he uh, he was the oh, what was he? President, the thing or the director of rugby? Can't I can't quite remember what his uh, his his title was at Kirkcaldy, but I knew him uh-huh. through my parents as well. And uh, and Dunfermline and Kirkcaldy, really good rivalry, but again. Really good mates. Like I grew up playing against folk at Kirkcaldy and um, and watching them, and I played them at seniors as well. And they were they were dead keen to have me along, and I was I was really keen to kind of dip my kind of get my dip, dip my toe in that adult coaching, and I really enjoyed it. Really yeah, I enjoyed. Just, it. I was just going to ask, how, like, how was your experience? At, oh, amazing! At yeah. Um. Well, Chris Richards was the other forwards coach that I uh, that I coached with because uh, I was I could make it along all the time, so I was there trying to be at least once a week because um, mm. only train Tuesday, Thursday normally and then the game on the Saturday. I make what games I could. I think I, I got a couple of the season before COVID cut it shot. Yeah. But uh, Chris, Chris was a really good uh, really good coach. He'd, he'd come through at Fife Southern uh, coaching. He played himself where he kind of hurt his neck and Quinny, um, Simone International, Quentin Sav, he, yes. he, he played and coached Kirkcaldy for years. I watched him. I watched him play and I've watched him coach. And it was really, it was really good to kind of learn, co- uh, let's say learn coach. Yeah, well, you do learn coaching, learn coaching alongside yeah. them for on the job. And now I loved it, really welcoming and um, really, really good club. And I'd, uh, it, it made me want to coach more 
and being situated in the West now and now kind of COVID's kind of dying down I'll hopefully be able to kind of get involved in maybe a bit of coaching through there I've got a few friends who are uh, teachers at a couple of the schools in terms of rugby coaches and PE teachers as well so I'd maybe look at try to get involved with um, some of the kind of senior under 16s coaching stuff there Yeah why not again dip, just dipping your toe in you don't ask you don't get sort of thing Um because you said about Dunfermline and Kirkcaldy being rival, it kind of just made me laugh because I played at Glenrothes when I was coming through youth. I then played like Colt level at Kirkcaldy and now I'm at Howard Fife, so I've just kind of done a little five circle myself. So. Oh, fair play, yeah. <laughs> you've, you, you've, been, you've been around a few teams. Yeah, just that. Um, but again, like Kirkcaldy, um, you mentioned the Samoan coach. He, like, he taught me briefly when I was there. But my main coach was Willie Anderson, who also was a former Scotland international. And oh, yeah. he, really, he really helped me on, come along a long way. And kind oh, of... Fantastic, like, yeah. Yeah, kind of helped my... Not just intensity, just like, you're really good at this. Stick to that. Don't try and be anyone else. Be yourself. And that's kind of always stuck with me. I always tried to, like, growing up, I think every player does it growing up. You want to be like like your Stuart Hogs, your Dan Carters and Brian O'Driscoll's and all that. You you want to try and show off, especially in front of your mates. But I think once I went to Kirkcaldy, I think I tried something and it was just too fancy. And Willie just, no, stop doing that. It's stupid. It doesn't work. You get like one out of 10. Actually, it comes off. You're you're a bigger lad. Because like, I, I was a centre or fullback at the time. And it was, yeah. you're, you're a bigger lad use it if Absolutely. you've got if you've got like 30 40 meters ahead of someone just run through them just go for it so yeah i've kind of always stuck with that and now i'm, I'm actually part of the park i'm in the forwards now at house so oh nice is gav still coaching there yeah gav's head coach yeah i know gav's gav's a good guy i've done some school hard knock stuff with him yeah yeah he's always he's always busy with a school hard knocks and or how a five he's yeah he's great head coach mm. very ha- very hands on if if you if you make an arse of it he will tell you he's, you've made an arse of it yeah not in a, not in a negative way but like oh no like you need to be told me. sometimes yeah I don't I'm never one that like if I even if I know I've messed up and be like oh how was that and I go yeah good nah, it wasn't good though was it like <laughs> sort of thing um. I was just going to ask, what's your personal goal for the upcoming season? I've been thinking about that, and with it only being kind of a short-term deal that I'm on just now, is to get playing, um, yeah. to get to get back playing, get some consistency in my game, and uh, hopefully stay um, stay at Glasgow uh, longer than I'm than I'm dis- than I'm kind of looking at just now. Uh, and if not, if that doesn't work out have some new footage and have some kind of momentum myself to, to go somewhere else and experience uh, experience somewhere um, somewhere different. Like, uh, just go back to Edinburgh, please. <laughs> Aye. Never say <seen> never. <laughs> um, no, that's good. I like, I always like, oh, um, want to see you play well because like, I've seen you pretty much come through at Edinburgh because I'm a big Edinburgh fan. I was, I was there for your debut. I wasn't there like for you, oh, baby, but like that's I, I just so to, good. yeah, I just happened to be there for your international debut. So I've always like I do because I do a lot of TikTok videos as well. That's how we start all this podcast. Oh, cool. I get asked like a lot of combined fifteens or like future fifteens or or whatever, and it's like, oh, who do you think's going to be in the Scotland World Cup squad? And you need like, yeah. like th- three props, three hookers, three tight heads. And I have actually got you as one of my tight heads because I'm like, there's no reason why he shouldn't be in that mix. I'm not. Well, I'm okay. not just saying. I'm not just saying that because you're on the call. Like, uh, I've got, got a couple of years, and that's that's certainly been a goal of mine as well, a long term one. Um, I certainly want to kind of get that blue jersey back again. Yeah, absolutely. Um, some unfinished business there, so no, definitely. There's go. Good few years still ahead of me, touch wood, and we'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, I think the big consideration I did was like, right, so the World Cup's in two years. You then also need to consider people's ages at then. And granted, like some positions you can go a lot longer, but so like the backs, I've not really picked anyone over like the age of 30 or 32. Because I'm like, I'm not saying they couldn't do it, but do you know, do you know what I mean? Like you start winding down past the yeah. But you, you're only like, what, 23, aren't, aren't you, Murray? I'm 25 now. 25? 
Yeah, 25. So even still, like 27, like that's peak. Can that's considered like peak age? Oh, for, so why not? I, I don't see. There you go. SRU if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like hopefully you get enough game time for Glasgow, uh, especially with preseason next week. You've got you've got Newcastle Falcons next week. Newcastle next week, week yeah, it's Scotson. That'll be good. Hopefully you get a decent run out for that. Um, no, yeah, then, it's, I'm hoping so. Then build, continue to build on your form, and who knows, might even see you back in the navy blue for the autumn tests. Hey, never say never, mate. It's all never about just working, working on them, working on getting to that Glasgow team first, and then we'll uh, we'll see what comes from it. Yeah, that's it. I've always said that as well. If you do, if you train hard, like well enough, you earn a start for the club. If you start doing really well for a club, you should merit a international call up regardless of who you are. So I've always said that. So hopefully you tick all those boxes as well. Let's hope so. Just a little one for you, because obviously you, you were at Edinburgh as well. Um, how What do you think of Mike Blair being appointed as Edinburgh head coach? Oh, I'm delighted for him. Um, I'm del- delighted for the club as well. He's, he, he's, he's, I've been involved with him in Scotland. Uh, and he was he was a kind of skills with a lot of the backs. Um, and he's, he's a fantastic coach, really hands-on. Really involved, um, brings a really good energy, and no, I think you, I think you do great things, great things for the club. Hopefully not in eighteen seventy two this year, mind. But, uh, <laughs> no, he's uh, no, Mike's Mike's going to do really well, and um, the boys are certainly delighted to have him on board. So, no, it was, it was an exciting appointment for them. Yeah, definitely. I was I was buzzing for that. I'm I'm not going to lie. I, I wasn't expecting that. I kind of threw some names out there just to be like, why not? But. Yeah, no, I am chuffed for Mike Blair. Obviously, he's a club legend as a player. Yeah. Did well as a Scotland assistant coach for many years. I think it was under all of Gregor's reign. Yeah, yeah. So he he knows the players in and out. Yeah, it makes it makes perfect sense. Obviously, like you said, you don't want them to do well in the eighteen seventy two. But apart from that, you obviously you like they'll root for you to do well. Like even in Europe, like I do that. Yeah, I'm an Edinburgh fan, but if Glasgow is in the quarterfinals of the Champions Cup, like I'd, I'd like to see Glasgow because it does benefit Scottish rugby. So well, that's it. That's that's the that's the kind of the big goal at the end of the day. Yeah, uh, I mean, just I can't ar- argue with you at all on that. And um, we've got a few questions from fans because we've okay. always been we've been for the fans, by the fans. So thought we'll let them get involved we've done a little competition the three most liked questions gets asked to you in this interview so we'll go for the first one Patrick yeah. Murphy 434 has asked who was your idol growing up my rugby idol growing up yes so I remember what I didn't I didn't start watching a lot of rugby until until I was a bit older but I can't I can't quite look past the chunk Alan Jacobson watching watching the big man move when I was uh, going to watch him at Edinburgh was brilliant. Yeah, that's fair. Aye, chunk chunks de- definitely <laughs> got to be up there for the front row front row idols. Fair enough. Any other idols out of the front row or just? Well, I was just in general watching or watching the likes of. I used to love watching um, Rocco Foco. Yeah, uh, cl- for the old class. Match. Yeah, he was, he, yeah. He, he was fantastic. And um, big Victor Matfield uh, for South Africa was always good to watch. Yeah, he just, he just ages like a fine wine as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, uh, Oscar Rugby has asked, how is the team before kickoffs like? Are they excited? Are they nervous? So we'll go, we'll ask you for like your experience when you were at Edinburgh. Oh, the team like honest, right boys, boys take it. It's, it's a very personal thing. So boys, boys are all pretty different. Some guys sit head down, uh, headphones on, don't like to speak. Like they'll give you a wee nod or a hello uh, when you arrive. But they, some guys that really like to get in the zone. You've got other boys that just like cutting about, sip a Red Bull, stretch, chat away. Um, nah, it's, it's pretty different. Some guys are straight out onto the pitch to warm up. Uh, but in, it was half an hour before it was a team and then boys, some boys will go out 20 minutes before that to kind of just saunter about, jog or kick or do loads of different warm-up things. And Now, the, the team itself is very focused. Um, like you don't want to be sitting fanny about uh, before a game because you want to still be kind of, you've still got a job to do. 
but no, nah, it's, it's it's a very individual thing. Um, before before the game, some guys will have certain supplements to take, or certain they want to take certain juices or drinks or waters or tablets or things like that. Um, yeah. Aye. So run us through like game day, half an hour till kick off. What 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 do you do to game day for me? Well, before the team warm up, I'll um, I really did a primer, which mm-hmm. was a kind of it's uh, meant to get your hormones and fast twitches going, I think. And so you go and you do some power things and some sprints an hour and a half before kickoff. So you're in quite early. Wow. And then from then they'd have a meeting, uh, a forwards would meet and the backs would meet and then the team would have a quick chat. And then from then it's your time. So there could be another kind of half hour or so, 40 minutes to kind of cut about before the team warm up. I like to stay pretty relaxed. I'm not one for sitting listening to really raggy music or... Um, I don't like. I'm normally normally pretty good at. I don't. I, I don't like looking at sitting reading through notes. I like to have known my stuff before then, so I kind of use that time to myself. I'll chat to some of the boys who are in that same frame of mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like to have a Red Bull, maybe two. Depends. If not, maybe some. They, do, they have this caffeine chewing gum. Uh huh. Yeah. And see, the first time you take that, that is rocket fuel. <laughs> that would start to build some um, resistance to it as you take it a bit more but bloody hell the first couple of times I had that that hit me like a steam train so yeah it's, it's, it's about it depends if you're starting or on the bench and uh, it depends on what kind of different stuff you take and then if the team warm up um, let's say the team warm up at 7 I'll, I'll go out maybe 10 to 7 and uh, I'll I'll do some stretches pass the ball or maybe quarter to 7 do some stretches pass the ball about um, because everyone else is kind of doing their own thing anyway, so but yeah, that's 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 me prior to a game. That's fine. I like that. Apart from the the caffeine chewing gum, I think I'll just avoid that one for future references. Um, last question from the fans. Um, it's from Rugby Kyle. Kyle was actually one of our guests on the show previously. He's a great lad. He supports us through and through. So, um, what made you want to be a rugby player, and how did you actually go about it? I really liked it. I really liked rugby. Um, like some some rugby players, I mean, they like rugby, but they don't like sitting. They, they don't watch much rugby. And when when they're when they're at, when they're at work and they're, they're training, that's rugby time. And when they're away, they're not. I mean, I was at rugby pig. I love watching it. Like I'm I'm a fan before I was a player, mm. so I, I I do really enjoy watching it. So if I didn't if I didn't like it, I wouldn't do it. So that's that's the main thing. That's the reason I'm a rugby player. Um, and I was lucky enough to kind of get selected and things, of course. But how I went about it was I didn't see because it, it's some teams when you're younger, the it's around the under eighteen age when some kids will start kind of dropping off, like mm, yeah, parties, women drink, that all kind <laughs> of like things you experiment with as you're a youngster start creeping in and they're like do I want to be going to training do I want to be playing a game at the weekend so I, I like I still like taking things a bit more seriously I, I really enjoyed it and the fact I hated lo- I hate losing as well uh, I, I couldn't be bothered with some of the guys who, were t- uh, who could take it less seriously at times so I was um, lucky enough to get kind of spotted at a, a, Fife, under t- a Fife under 15 pathway day by Andy Henderson the Strath Allen um, rugby coach and he knew my mum and dad from past professions and got chatting to my dad at the sidelines and was like, how'd your boy fancy coming up for a kind of scholarship testing day at the school? Um, because the school suck, it's really good in Scotland. Yeah. Um, and yeah, from there, I was lucky enough to, to get up there and they were, I was very grateful on how they could financially help us out to get me to the school. And uh, from there, Made Scotland under 18s after that, my um, two years there. Um, didn't get anything after that, didn't get offered anything. So I was like, I like biology, no, I like chemistry, I like geography, Aberdeen Uni, oil. That was all the rave at the time. And I was like, you know what, I'll go up there and do that. Yeah. Uh, uni was good fun, but I slowly, uh, slowly kind of got to grips that I, I don't like studying. I struggled. No, I don't. I struggled to do it at times. Um, yeah. School was could have been a more of a doddle if I tried a bit harder at times. But I, I could listen and take it in and do the work, yeah. and that, that that was good for me. So went up to uni. I was like, I need to do a lot of reading here. This isn't really for me. 
And uh, I played I played the year at Aberdeen Grammar um, in Prem 2 and uh, also f- played a, lot, a few games for the uni. Made Scotland under 20s after that. And then it was basically just kind of persistence on my part. I mean, sometimes I didn't even get, see, when I was younger, sometimes I didn't even get the, uh, I kept saying they had my wrong email address. I didn't even get the letters or my wrong, wrong address. I'd turn up at the second days. <laughs> Fair enough. Why not? Yeah, I, had a, I had a close friend who was kind of getting, he was getting the letters, and I was like, ah, sack, it'll come along, see what the crack is. And like, oh, I'm not getting the list. And I'm like, ah, it's fine. You spelled my name wrong. But um, but no, from then, and that's, I got off an academy after my year in Aberdeen and never looked back. I've moved to Edinburgh in 2015 and I'm still living here anyway. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's kind of how I kind of got into things and kind of progressed and kind of moved through. Yeah, so just basically, just never give up. Just always, if you love it, just keep it going, sort of thing. Yeah, if you, if you, if you want to do it, there's there, there are so many more avenues than getting a, an academy or a professional deal straight out of school. Um, just just keep battering on, and if you want to test yourself at a higher level, you might need to move clubs if you are at a club in a lower league. But just just keep just keep testing yourself. Keep keep yeah. testing. Wanting to kind of push to that next stage, if you want to become a professional rugby player, you do just kind of need to keep testing yourself and trying to. If if, if no one's picking you up, you need to do it yourself. You just you need to maybe try out other other clubs uh, in other areas or other environments, and um yeah. and, and that's another avenue. Or there's even there's college courses, which is I, I didn't even know about this. I only knew about it because I had friends who did it. There's um there's a college course at uh, Edinburgh College. That is, it's, it's like a prep for professional sport almost. All right. Um, okay. do at Telford, and um, that it, you you effectively you do like a I think you do like some sports studies, but you're also doing a lot of training in the same style and kind of schedule as a professional athlete, and professional rugby players. Um, so that's the, there are various things, and then if you some people are late bloomers. Lewis Bean, I'm pretty sure, didn't pick up rugby until a few years ago, and now he's playing at Glasgow. He's been in Northampton. He's been at uh, Worcester on loan, and, and that was only through the army. Like there's, there's, there's so many different chances than kind of getting picked up at age 16. So if you are kind of snubbed, just just keep at it if you if you fancy it, and if you don't, play play for a hobby, enjoy yourself, because yeah, that's that is the key thing is to enjoy it. Because as soon as you stop enjoying it, it's a chore. It's not fun. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm. All, I've always been like that. If I don't enjoy something, I don't. I don't do it. And it's as simple as that. Um, like you said, like test yourself with like clubs at higher levels. I stopped playing when I was like eighteen years old. I took a really bad hit across the shoulders, so I stopped playing. And then obviously COVID and like stud. I was studying, and then COVID happened, and I had my little boy like straight before COVID. So instead of having like the year and a half off that was planned, I took like nearly four years off yeah if not more and I was I was getting back to the gym just to like just regularly get fitter and healthier and I bumped into one of my mates that I knew from like high school and I was like I really want to get back into rugby now like it's not just I want to try it and see how I get on it's I want yeah. I, it's, a, it's an itch and he was like just crack on he's like just have a look at the clubs because like Obviously, like, I, lo- I still live in Fife, so you've got Glenrothes, Kirkcaldy, Howe, uh, Dunfermline, Resyth, uh, Fife Southern, just to name a few. And even like go down the route of like university teams if I really wanted to. Um, oh, absolutely, there's so many different, there's, there's so many different clubs and so many different kind of standards and leagues. There's there is genuinely opportunity for um, everyone. Yeah, and um, I was kind of like, I because I played at Kirkcaldy my last season before I stopped playing, so I was like. You know what? I know how it works there. It's not too far away from where I live. It makes perfect sense. But then I was like, I really want to test myself. And my mate that I was speaking to about all this plays at how, and then I was asking like, what players are there? And he was telling me and it's a lot of the boys I grew up with. That mm. a lot of them actually came from the chunk of Glenrothes, like under 16s. Oh, nice. They were, all, they were all kind of split apart and now we're all essentially back together. Big Gav was taking them all down. He coached big at Glenrothes. Gav, yeah, Big Gav's taking them down, yeah. I think I've played at Glenrothes as well. Yeah, yeah, he was, yeah. Yeah, he played, he coached, and I think he coached before, he, uh, after he played, sorry, at Glenrothes. Yeah, um, but like, my, my pal told me that Gav was a the coach. There's his name. Message him on Facebook because I'm not one for just rocking up. Mm. It's, I feel very out of place I'd always 
stuff like that, I'd always be like, like, I'm blah, blah, blah. I'm this age. Is it okay if I come down? Yeah. Um, Gal was re- really up for it. Let me come down to the team. Uh, let me train with the backs for like a month. And then it was, I got a call from Gav and he suggested that it's best for me to be a forward. And a bit of a shock. I think I kind of beat myself up about it because I wasn't like fit enough to be a back. Mm. But I think it was a kick up the arse I needed because there was some teams, I'm not naming them because that's, that's disrespectful, but there was some teams that were like, yeah, yeah, come down like with nothing and oh, you'll get game time and you'll be full back. But like now being at Howe, I'm nowhere near being at full back. And I'm like, the difference and just even management, just like common sense. You don't want a sluggish fullback. You want no. a like, you want like a whippet or a yeah one that's got the engine. And I just want well, you see people me. change. People do change positions. Like, like you can't be disheartened about that as long as you're still playing. Yeah, I've played uh, two the last two weeks in preseason. Coming on, I started my first game at second row, and I came off the bench uh, against Liberton on uh, for the second row as well. I'm not the tallest, but We've not got generally a tall squad. Yeah. But yeah, so I was a, the first game, especially, was a bit of a shock to the system. And like my shoulder was in bits after it just because like the constant pushing in the scrum and it was all new. But I, I think I'm getting there. I think I'm doing better than I give myself credit for, or I'd like to think I am. So Definitely. just a little fun one for you. This will go out on the Thursday, so probably out of date by then. but the Fife Cup is on the 28th of August. Okay. And it's how it's, Fife is ho- it's how oh, Fife nice. is hosting it. Um, who, 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 who do you want to win? Because you've got some roots. You've coached at Kirk- well, Who's not Kirk- playing in it? Because I, cause I, remember, I think I remember there was a Fife Cup when I was coaching, but it was a bit. I couldn't, couldn't quite remember all the teams that were there. Uh, so it's Glenrothes, Kirkcaldy, How Fife, How Fife Crusaders, uh, St Andrews Uni, Resyth. Ah, uh, I can't remember. I think that's, I think that's it. I could be wrong, but out of them, who'd you? Because you've got you've played for Dunfermline. And I'm gonna, Oscar I'm gonna. T- Oof. So Dunfermline are involved. Dunfermline's playing, yeah. Right, okay. I'm gonna say it's a toss up between Dunfermline and Kirkcaldy. Oh boo! <laughs> I, can see, I can see a Dunfermline and Kirkcaldy final. I'd like to see you and Big Gav prove me wrong. That's fine. I'll, I'll let him know. I'll tell him that one. <laughs> it's like Gav, Murray McCallum says you to prove him wrong and get to the final, even though we're hosting it. So, absolutely. Why not? How how one and two is in the final? Why not? Stranger things <laughs> have happened. But also, uh, massive thank you, Murray, for coming on the show and agreeing to do this. Um, huge thanks to Glasgow as well for helping us with that. I'm, I'm still surprised that. I'd done it so calmly on the, like through an email and like, is there any chance a Glasgow Warrior player can be a guest? And they went, How about Murray McCall? I'm like, Oh my god, we, we actually got an answer. Just chucked you the riffraff, mate, you had to say <laughs> <laughs> Nah, nah, not at all. There's no settling here. We we're <laughs> grateful for every opportunity and honestly I'm just you're more than welcome on the show any time you you feel when... Thanks very much. Thanks very much for having me on as well. No um, worries. All the best with the Rugby Connection podcast. Uh for the rest of the time and I'm sorry um, Simeon and Sean couldn't make it on as well but um, yeah good luck in the Fife Cup and all the best with everyone going forward thank you and all the best for your uh, run in Glasgow hopefully you get a run of form and hopefully see you in the Navy jersey for the Open Tests or even the Six Nations who knows okay, let's hope so cheers um, just for the fans where can they find you if they want to find me they can fit, uh, I'm the same on Twitter and Instagram so that's um, it's basically Magnet but it's M4 instead of an A uh, G-N-E-T with a little underscore at the end and that's, 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 that's because my mate used to call me a chip magnet when I was younger taking a piss out of me uh, so I call myself <laughs> Magnet on, um, on Twitter and Instagram yeah. fair enough fair enough <laughs> and uh, you can also follow us on we're on YouTube we're on Spotify uh, we're all on TikTok. You know us by now. I'm Blissful Rugby HQ. Simeon is the TikTok ref. Sean is Offload Rugby Media. If you really just like the pod itself, the pod has its own TikTok page. It's Rugby Connection Pod. 
Um, yeah, that's where you can follow us. And this episode will be out on YouTube, Spotify, and other streaming services as well. So, yeah, just again, Murray, thanks for coming on. And yeah, great chat. And Perfect. No worries. Thanks for the much, Murray. Thank you. Cheers. You too. I don't know. See you.